Buff Dudes Phase 2 Cutting Plan. Getting started with deadlifts. Day one. You can see there's pyramiding too. It's five sets. 15, which is kind of like a warm up, feel out set, and then it goes from 12, 10, 8, 6. And um, you're feeling it by the end of this, that's for sure. But it feels good. Definitely. This is the most weight we've lifted since wrapping up our bulking plan, which has been about a year ago. Has it? Yeah. And for those of you who've had questions, I know we had some comments saying, what's up with these consolidated videos? Well, we're actually doing the main cutting series on our Buff Dudes channel, but for Buff Dudes workouts, we wanted to create these videos for maybe those of you who wanna, you know, you're in the gym, you just wanna cut straight to the workout to see certain exercises performed. That's what this series is for. Yeah, going to the heavier weights now. I particularly love deadlifts, more so than squats, personally, I should say. It's a fun exercise. Yeah. You just feel strong, like lifting shit off the ground and then slamming Dropping it back it. down. <laughs> it is. It's so funny. It's such a simple, I mean, it isn't. The okay. concept is very simple. There we go, exactly. The exercise itself is not simple, but the concept is simple. And it's it's awesome. Yeah. Get the negatives, too. If you've never done any kind of negative work or uh, kind of more eccentric-based kind of movement, you should definitely try it out. Um, you'll feel the muscle activating quite a bit and you'll get a lot of burn in there. And as you can see, we're just doing body weight, I think. And um, even that feels pretty difficult. You can always add weight, but um, the kind of the difference between a concentric contraction and the eccentric contraction is quite a bit different. So if you kind of separate them, let's say in pen lay rows, you're doing more just co concentrating on the concentric and then dropping it. But with these negatives, it's all about eccentric. And as Brandon was saying, it's much more difficult than you think it could be. And a great thing about the pull-up negatives is someone who's struggling with performing pull-ups can do the negatives. You know, it's a great it's a great precursor to the pull-up itself. And it's also hard exercise. So don't think to yourself, oh, you know, I'm only, I'm kind of doing the easy version. It's not easy by any means. No. And yeah, that's true. I mean, the, the negatives actually is going to build a lot of strength. So if you can't perform pull-ups, negatives will actually then build that strength up and help you to perform your first pull-ups in, in the near future. And you will do it, damn it, because you will be buff. We Unless you're buff you. already, and yeah. we do believe in you. As you can see, we just busted through a few <laughs> just exercises. Blew past all those other that's exercises. kind of the hard part sometimes, you know, you kind of get talking about a certain exercise. So you can see we did T-bar rows, we did straight arm pull downs, those are both back, and now we're moving on to the chest. So yes, we're doing chest and back in the same day, and it is an insane upper body pump. I love chest and back. It's definitely kind of doing those um, opposing muscle groups. To me, it feels the best. So it's like doing chest and back together, doing bison tries together. Of course, you're doing legs, you know, your quads and hamstrings together. Always creates the best workouts, I think, personally. And um, always have fun. Old school buff dudes. Yeah. These are really what you're watching now is the workouts that turned us from fluff dudes to buff dudes. I mean, it was just hitting the gym, hitting that chest and back hitting those buys and tries together like Brandon was saying. It's just visually, you begin to feel good very quickly, um, you know, mentally. It's just it's an awesome feeling. And uh, got to include some isolation work. So with the straight arm pull downs for lats, now we're doing the cable flies for chest. And now the circular crunches. This is, these look kind of funny, actually. Look at them. Do, do, do. Brandon doing some crunches. Do, do, do. Kind of like a dance. <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah, but they're, they're really good. I mean, you should try them out if you haven't. Yeah. Instead of Dance Dance Revolution, it's Buff Dudes Revolution. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna patent that, actually. Yeah. It's going to be a workout dance party game. Hell yeah. Nice. This is a heavily, heavily amount of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, front squats. The very uncomfortable exercise for most people, especially just getting into the position, that clean position with the grip can be very hard so hey you want to do a lot of kind of uh stretching in the forearms beforehand but if you can't you can always do the cross uh, you can just see from brandon's wrist right there about I mean, to break. yeah it, it looks like it and honestly that was an exercise that took quite a while for me to feel comfortable with as brandon was saying so as we often say start light perform lots of mobility beforehand in doing from more of a quad dominant exercise like front squats to then oh, oh. Arnold <laughs> he spotted so 
Brandon was doing dumbbell Romanian. I'm just distracted by this whole video, the the background. But let's yeah. let's let's be Wait, serious here. Um, <laughs> oh, I was Can't confused because I was like, oh, this is the. Okay. That's yeah. actually me in the background. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing an experimental <laughs> walking lunge. But back to the dumbbell Romanian deadlifts, we went from the quads with the front squats to the hamstrings with the Romanian deadlifts. Yeah. And now we're isolating the quads um, with a single joint exercise, the extensions, and now the same for the hamstrings. Single joint exercise, is isolation, the curls. We're hitting every damn part of the leg today. And walking lunges. I would say walking lunges and Romanian deadlifts are definitely staples of any buff dude's workouts. In, in addition to squats, of course. Yeah, most of these are staples. As you'll notice that, you know, if you followed our past routines or um, just workouts in general, we'll include uh, a dozen or so exercises that are always going to be kind of the mainstay for sure. It's because they work so good. You can't, you know, you don't want to recreate the wheel here. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And we kind of is there another analogy we can throw in to, to top it off? <laughs> Let's just do this whole, a whole video of analogies and sayings. <laughs> exactly. Hit the ground running. Yeah. Something always works out. Yeah. Here we're doing the push press, as you can see. So you're doing a bit of a dip drive press there, um, getting some of the legs and hips involved. Really trying to push past your shoulder limit. So if you're have a specific weight on the overhead press that you're kind of stuck out. Push press is going to help push past that, you know, no pun intended. But, um, yeah, it's an excellent exercise. And now with the upright rows, dumbbell upright rows, which, as you may or may not know, this exercise can raise a lot of um, heated discussion. But with the dumbbell, what is great is you can kind of pick and choose you know what feels best for you you're not locked into position as you would with a barbell so it's an exercise we would recommend in addition to face pulls which is an awesome exercise for your posterior delts and then right on to isolating the interior delts with the underhand front raise if you're having a slight shoulder impingement with the overhand front raise which um, I have in the past it just sometimes can uh, be a little uncomfortable try the underhand because then you're externally rotating the arms and it could be a bit more comfortable for you if you're struggling with the standard overhand um, you know, front raise so we've hit all three heads of the deltoids now we're moving on to the traps with the dumbbell shrugs this one's pretty simple you're just going to bring it up in a vertical line squeeze and hold at the top position and onto the Otis Ups, which is not only a great core exercise, you're also getting a little bit more shoulder activation in there as well. I feel like this is so rapid fire. I know. Like, what was I? Just, what was I? I must have had like 70 cups of coffee when I edited this thing. I'm, I'm actually a little disappointed in myself. i got to be honest. It's, we, we start to talk and then all of a sudden it's on to the next scene and I'm kind of cursing the past version of myself. Like, <laughs> Damn, dude, give us give us some time here. We're trying to we're trying to bullshit here and have some fun, and then all of a sudden, but also explain the exercise. And I think it's almost coming off like we have ADD or something. I know, I know, right? Maybe I was on the cutting plan as I was editing or something. You know, and I'm trying to trim all the fat. Yeah. So now, reverse grip barbell press. We're on to day four, and if you haven't done this exercise before with the um, palms in the position they are, you're gonna feel more stress on the anterior deltoid or the front part of your shoulder. So keep that in mind and start with a light weight. Don't use the normal amount of weight you're gonna use when you're doing the standard flat barbell press. And then right on to the lying, so we started with the compound um, and then now going into the isolations. And this is essentially very similar to like a skull crusher, but the range of motion is slightly um, farther, uh, just because you can go past your forehead. You know, you can bring it kind of besides the ears there, and you can add some like Hudson's doing some rotation in there, so it's a little extra movement. So, um, kind of a alternative exercise to skull crushers, and um, just adding a bit more extra movement, and they feel pretty damn good. And you don't have the threat of actually crushing your skull, which is always nice. Yeah, you have safety where you yeah, can drop it, unless you live dangerously. Yeah. Rope extensions. Hell yeah. Not too complicated this exercise. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's like, okay, uh, former version of Hudson who edited this, get it, get on with it. What do you do? <laughs> yep, you just jerk it. Jerk it. <laughs> you just that's, jerk it. Yeah, that's going to be our tutorials when we're really burnt out yeah. a couple years just from now. Just jerk it. Just, just jerk that shit. Jesus 
Christ. Uh, Jesus. Okay, now the the comp the, now there's the compound movement for the biceps, the underhand pull downs. This one, you if you have some pretty good uh, mind muscle connection, you can really try to. If you're like the Professor X of buff, dudes. pretty much, yeah, you can really try to feel it the most in the biceps by not really concentrating on the back so much or the depression and the retraction of the scapula. Yeah. And um, you mainly just really try to pull and squeeze and flex the bicep as you're performing the exercise, and you'll feel it, uh, that engagement, the extra engagement in that bicep while you're doing that, if you really think about it. And seeing as this is a biceps and triceps day, you'll notice we started off the day with a compound utilizing triceps, and then as we transitioned into biceps, we started with a compound as well. So two compounds to start the muscle group and then onto the isolations. Hammer girls. Thing, right? Yeah. This is, I was <laughs> exactly. like, are they supinated? No, this is a bilateral yeah. hammer curls. He's throwing all those words at oh, you. Oh, man. I'm trying. Yeah. This buff dude's drinking game is getting started off strong. Hell yeah. Supinate, yeah. pronate, <laughs> and bilateral, of course, scapula. 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 That's, that's, the, that's the shot of, uh, you know, whiskey right there. We need, to, we need to get a t-shirt that just says all those things. <laughs> the words of a buff the, dude. The words that turn a buff dude on, and it's yeah. just all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, here we go. The preacher curls with the barbell. Um, as you can see, you got a little bit of an elbow sleeve on there. I've been having a little tiny pain in in my kind of forearm elbow area, so uh, that compression helps a little bit. If you guys are wondering why I'm wearing it, if you're not, then well, that was pointless for me saying. But yeah, then just jerk that cheek. Just jerk it. <laughs> I've been jerking it too hard. I think that's why I'm wearing this <laughs> elbow sleeve. <laughs> that's why I had to sleep. Yeah. He Damn was just, just thinking that. Yeah. Okay. So, scissor kicks. Oh, that was it. Wow. Yeah. That was, that was okay. scissor, scissor kicks. So there you go. On to day five here. Uh, legs again. Again. And as you'll notice, there's these phases that there's certain muscle groups that will be repeated um, in the phase. And with legs, there's just such a big muscle group and a lot of you know, I know a lot of people don't like working legs, uh, or at least they can be very difficult. So including them twice in the same week is really trying to increase the volume in the legs a bit more and try to push it um, a bit harder. So that way you can see, you know, it is a cutting plan, but you will be able to see some hypertrophy in there if you if you have everything on point and um, hopefully be able to see a little bit of uh, not only strength, but a little size in there too. Yeah, legs is one of those muscle groups that, especially for men, you know, it's not the most fun, it's not the most visual, but you do feel very rewarded when you begin to see that development. Because really, when you begin to see development in a muscle group such as the quads with, you know, the teardrops and everything, it's a, it's a damn good feeling. And just, it can also be a mental thing as well, because if you have a great training partner, obviously me and Brandon are lucky being brothers that we can push each other. It's any like little mind thing you can do because sometimes it's not just the workouts themselves it's getting in there going god legs isn't one of my favorite things to work out but if you have someone there as well pushing you you're kind of you know you have that natural friendly competition any anything that can kind of make you want to get it done i feel like with legs the start of the workout is really difficult the middle midpoint starting to feel good because you got the blood flowing in the legs. I mean, it's it's tiring, but you can kind of feel that pump and the you know the kind of activation there. And then by the end, you feel awesome. Not only because it's over with, but also that you just feel like you you know you feel like you went through a war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You you, you survive. Yeah, exactly. You it, and it is the one workout that you'll always see people when they're done they're just like oh you know and they're like laying on the ground and like whoa and everything and then they're ne talking about it the next day or two like oh my god my legs are still like sore and everything so it does it does definitely have its benefits those all sounded very painful but <laughs> you're like oh fuck oh, god <laughs> wobbling it. out of the gym and yeah yeah but it is it don't is, injure yourself there you go <laughs> Ooh, calf raises wow that? and this will be the one shot that i you know kept 45 seconds of. I know. The scissor kicks are like 0.2 seconds long, and this is like <laughs> 30 seconds. There we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Oblique crunches. And as you can see, we're including the core in every single day of this plan. And that's really thanks to the suggestions we got, because our first couple plans, you know, we would do abs, but we didn't really include it in the plan itself. And then people say, hey, where's the abs? So here they are. Yeah. And they're, they're been sore almost every day, too. Yeah. And yeah. it's working because uh, we're taking those progress photos. We hope you are too. And we're very happy with our results so far, but we're not 
completely satisfied. We still have a couple more phases. This is just the midway point. We still got phase three and four. So we need to we need to really begin to bust ass now. I think now with the phase three and four is when you, you really start seeing your results. You know, yeah. you start feeling it, but also seeing it too in the mirror. And then the last phase is with just the, the fine tuning and, and really just dialing everything in. You're the buff terminator. But it is true, phase one and two, it's really building that consistent routine. You're getting into the habits of eating, exercise, and then really with this midway point, you're gonna start to see the results. I know we are, but it also inspires you because as I was saying, you just wanna push yourself that much harder. I know I have a little few things, just tiny things, not big, but just mostly as far as eating, I feel the workouts have been really strong, but I can, I can make a few little adjustments to the eating, but. Hope you enjoyed that, that's phase two. We'll be back with phase three and phase four in these car style videos, really just running through the workouts themselves. As I mentioned earlier, if you wanna see the full cutting plan, you can go to our main channel, playlist in description. But until next time, you know what to do. Stay buff.